Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. A few weeks ago on this channel we looked at WrestleMania Arcade, the absurd professional wrestling game featuring digitised graphics that was developed by Midway. This insane game that came from the same studio as both Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam presented the world of sports entertainment in all new ways. WrestleMania Arcade was unique in that it not only showcased WWF wrestlers as digitised sprites, but it also allowed them to take part in Mortal Kombat-like brawls, featuring ridiculous uppercuts that launch opponents into the sky, and basically even the odd fatality here and there. Like both NBA Jam and the Mortal Kombat series, WrestleMania Arcade was a hit for Midway, as were the game's home ports that would be published by Acclaim. Whilst WrestleMania Arcade is an easy game to remember, one that gets way overlooked today is the game's sequel, WWF In Your House, a further wrestling game featuring digitised sprites that is even more off the wall than its predecessor. In today's video we are going to be exploring the truth as to why this game's release was so low key. We're going to focus on some of the real life behind the scenes events that would shape this game and look at the final product that was delivered to players. This ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of WWF In Your House, the most ridiculous wrestling game of the 90s. Yeah. The fifth generation of console gaming would result in a bloody lot of wrestling games being released. Across the Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64, I can think of eight completely different games focused around just the World Wrestling Federation. And that's before we bring all the WCW, ECW and Japanese wrestling games into the equation. With this in mind, it is easy to jump to the conclusion that with this amount of games, In Your House simply got lost in the mix. After all, we had already had our fix of digitised wrestling games with WrestleMania Arcade and the WWF games that would come after In Your House, which would all feature 3D polygon graphics, which would further wow players. But there is much more to this tale than this game simply not dazzling gamers. In fact, thinking about WWF games featuring 3D models, they would arrive at the dawn of the Attitude Era professional wrestling's most popular time in history that would channel the spirit of the likes of South Park and Jerry Springer. The promotion with its crude and ridiculous storylines successfully managed to capture the zeitgeist of late 90s popular culture, so Wrestling Games 2 had a bigger audience than ever before. Wrestling was no longer imitating pop culture, it had close to become pop culture itself. In Your House was the last wrestling game released prior to both the Attitude Era Boom and the 3D Polygon Model Gravy Train. So taking both of these major factors into account, it is not surprising that people talk less about this wrestling game than most. However, what may come as a surprise to you is that we are still at the very, very tip of the iceberg here when it comes to why this game was not a success. As mentioned previously, the game's prequel WrestleMania Arcade had successfully managed to deliver a memorable experience that many gamers still reminisce about to this day. The WWF along with Midway, the developers of the game, would both make a lot of money from this project. However, further parties would make a decent profit from this endeavour too. As away from the arcade, the game would be published by Acclaim and ported to a number of different home formats. The home conversions of this title, which were all decent efforts I may add, were developed by a company known as Sculptured Software. A development house Acclaim and Midway had previously tasked with creating home ports of the Mortal Kombat titles. As discussed many times on here before, Acclaim, also known as LJN, were a publisher with a lot of fingers in different pies, who had a reputation for snapping up the rights to as many different popular intellectual properties as possible, often tasking developers to make games as quickly as they could to cash in on movie and TV licenses whilst they were still fresh rather than trying to create a market games based on their actual quality. Despite this, Acclaim's relationship with Midway was different, meaning that the company would often put additional effort into making sure that they got things right when it came to the handling of Midway's IPs. The likes of Mortal Kombat was a major success due to the unique gaming experience it delivered, not because it was based on a famous TV show, 
So, not only were the home pools of such games given more time and quality control in development, but due to their popularity in gaming, Acclaim themselves would pump huge sums of money into the marketing, production and distribution of such games. Mortal Kombat would ultimately become one of Acclaim's biggest cash cows, so it is no surprise that the same love, care and attention would go into WrestleMania Arcade. Despite Acclaim appearing to become richer and richer off of the back of Midway's games, the powerful publisher would soon run into issues that would cause all sorts of problems internally. Basically, 1996 would result in a slew of embarrassing accounting problems for the huge corporate entity, which would soon result in them becoming investigated by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. It had come to light that the company had been taking part in shady behaviour, involving the shipping of their 16-bit era cartridges, a revelation that would mean the company now risked insolvency if they did not clean up their act. To try and put it simply, Acclaim had been recording their revenue as it shipped its products to retailers and middlemen firms, then setting aside large portions of cash to cover the possibility of returns. Basically, Acclaim would recognise the revenue from each unit shipped before consumer demand was actually tested. According to the Wall Street Journal, in the fiscal year of 1996, the money Acclaim had set aside for unsold products fell $114 million short leading to a $214 million net loss, resulting in lawsuits by investors and business partners alleging that the company had grossly inflated its quarterly earnings. The trouble that greedy acclaim had landed themselves in would soon mean that Midway chose that they would want nothing to do with them. Regardless of this, the tension between the companies had been mounting for some time over existing issues regarding the NBA Jam license. So this recent revelation was the final now in the coffin of the relationship. Throughout this period, Acclaim would for now retain the WWF home gaming license, thus meaning that Acclaim would retain the home rights to continue to publish WWF games for a good few more years. This meant that they could release a sequel to WrestleMania Arcade whether they still had Midway's help and blessings or not. The development house they were tasked with creating another digitised wrestling game would sensibly be Sculptured Software, the American studio who had previously handled the home ports of various Mortal Kombat games, and of course WrestleMania Arcade itself, thus meaning the developers were up for the tall task. The sort of WrestleMania Arcade sequel would go by the name of WWF In Your House, and feature the tagline on the box, There Goes the Neighbourhood. In Your House was the name of WWF's at the time by monthly pay-per-views, so the game would take its name from there. When looking at In Your House, it appears that the development goal with the game was to create a title that appeared bigger, better and even more ludicrous than what came before it. The first and most obvious move in creating such a game would of course be the inclusion of a larger roster of characters. WrestleMania, the arcade game, would feature 8 wrestlers, whereas In Your House would instead feature 10. The game would only see 3 stars return from the previous one, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart and The Undertaker, 3 of the biggest WWF stars of 1996. As for the other 5 wrestlers, they were no longer with the company. Razor Ramon and Lex Luger had both jumped to rival promotion WCW, and Yokozuna was out of action after being sent home to lose weight. However, he could never lose enough to see a WWF return. As for Bam Bam Bigelow, he had departed in 1995 after requesting he finish his contract early due to becoming disillusioned by the clique's creative influence on the show. Shawn Michaels and co had increasingly gained a lot of political influence in the company over the years. As for Doink, the ridiculous character was being used as a jobber throughout mid-1995 and had his final televised match for quite some time for the company in September of that year. As for well I guess the new, new generation roster we got in this game, the seven new characters would include Owen Hart, the popular brother of Brett the Hitman Hart, who had been teaming throughout this period with his brother-in-law, the British Bulldog. Speaking of the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, he is another new addition to the roster. At the time of the game's release, he was often placed near the top of WWF cards. That year, he even faced WWF champion Shawn Michaels in a feud that was supposedly based on Smith's wife, Diana, accusing Michaels of hitting on her, a storyline that was somewhat of a precursor to the Attitude Era. We then have the man they call Vader, a mountain of a man who had only debuted with the company earlier that year, after having a hugely successful run in both Japan and WCW. 
Vader was a great acquisition and great inclusion within this game. The game also allows players to play as Ahmed Johnson, a former American football player who WWF were pushing hard at the time to try and create a top star. In his short tenure, he even quickly became the first African American to win a singles championship in the WWF. We also had the snobbish Hunter Hearst Helmsley, a young man who in the future would go on to be more commonly known as Triple Bloody H. The Connecticut Blue Blood was continuing with a modified version of his Levesque gimmick he had established in WCW prior. One of my all time favourite characters is also featured in the game, Gold Dust. The then villain, nicknamed the Bizarre One because of his somewhat spooky, mysterious and sexually suggestive mannerisms and presence, used his in-ring psychology to his advantage. Goldust often used lewd and flirtatious mind games to anger, confuse and distract his opponents. You'll never forget the name, Goldust. <laughs> Finally, we have the roster member I first think of when I think of this game. The freaking Ultimate Warrior, who as you all know if you watched my last video, was not included in WrestleMania the arcade game due to falling out with the company and subsequently leaving. Well, 1996 would see the historic return of the Warrior after a four year long leave of absence, meaning that he would appear in this In Your House game. When it comes to the Ultimate Warrior though, he was never far from controversy, resulting in this WWF run only lasting a few months. In fact, he would leave the company before this game was even released. Allegedly, WWF terminated Warrior's contract when he missed several house shows due to apparently taking time off to grieve the death of his father. WWF owner Vince McMahon, on the other hand, claimed that Warrior had not seen his father in 10 years and did not much care for him. Therefore, he did not take Warrior's excuse for missing house shows at face value. Warrior, on the other hand, disputes McMahon's explanation altogether regarding his release and claimed that the real reason why he did not show up to work was due to a breach of contract by McMahon, in which WWF sold Warrior's merchandise without giving him a percentage. Despite all of this, thankfully, we still get to play as Warrior within this game so his 1996 run has been further cemented in history due to the existence of this very game. Pictures from the period depicting sessions where the wrestlers were recorded to be digitised reveal that the further two characters were at one point intended to be in the game in one shape or another. First we have a female star, Sunny, whose intended role in the game is still unclear, but would obviously go unused. The second character though is Jeff Jarrett, who was planned to be a part of the roster. However, upon leaving the WWF in early 1996 over a contract dispute, there was enough time to remove him from the game altogether, a luxury which parties simply did not have when it came to the Ultimate Warrior. In terms of characters, we've also got Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning and Vince McMahon himself both calling the in-ring action within this game. Apart from the newer, bigger roster, the second instantly most notable change to the game is of course the arenas where all the action in this game takes place. Whilst WrestleMania the arcade game featured one simple stadium backdrop to feature the in-game shenanigans, In Your House on the other hand features a custom arena bespoke to each wrestler in the game. Basically, think of this as like a traditional fighting game, where each character has their own themed stage to brawl in. In Your House is no different in this regard. Personally, I think this feature is creative and cool, and attempts to further represent the lore behind each character in the game a feat I cannot recall seeing attempted in any wrestling game previously, and at the very least, the regular changes in setting help break up the game a little bit, and at the very least makes this video look a little bit more colourful, which I highly appreciate. As cool as this feature is though, on the more negative side, this feature does further remove In Your House from looking like a game that replicates the action found on TV. The action in gameplay found in WrestleMania the arcade game was already ridiculous, but the setting for the grappling was at least in line with what we were used to seeing. The backgrounds in this one make the title look more like a wacky fighting game than ever before and may not be to everyone's taste, especially if you were a wrestling fan in 1996 who was craving something more similar to what you were watching on WWF television. But at the very least, these backgrounds help the game stand apart from any other title in history. 
In terms of the controls and gameplay modes found in the game, in most cases it looks like the developers at Sculptured Software have attempted to replicate a lot of the controls and action found in WWF WrestleMania Arcade, with the button mapping also being mostly the same. In Your House though is often criticised for having less responsive controls and even worse hit detection from that of WrestleMania. It is of note though that a taunting system has been implemented, where characters can do more damage if they perform taunts before hitting moves. Like its predecessor, the game still presents totally absurd off the wall action, which is far closer to Mortal Kombat and other fighting games than it is to other wrestling titles. The Undertaker's Hadouken was very amusing in the first game, as is Owen Hart's ability to shoot playing cards in this one. The game is even wackier than what came before it. A famous but difficult move to execute within WrestleMania Arcade was The Undertaker's in-game finisher, which was pretty much a hilarious Mortal Kombat style fatality. There is a rumour that every character within that game was intended to have a ludicrous move like this. However, this idea would sadly have to be dropped due to time constraints with the game's development. In Your House on the other hand includes this feature, which means every wrestler in the title has basically their own wacky fatality. The other mechanical difference between this game and the last one is for icons the characters can collect throughout contests. Basically two different coloured WWF logos get scattered throughout the ring. Collecting silver ones power up your wrestlers giving players an advantage, whereas the red ones function in the opposite manner, weakening the player. The game functions with this bizarre mechanic turned on but thankfully it can be switched off for those who want to face off in a slightly more traditional encounter. Another feature that should be mentioned is the hefty amount of full motion video footage from the WWF that this game features, which whilst meaningless today, was pretty cool to see at the time. I personally remember getting excited about this sort of thing even at the tail end of the PlayStation's life. It was a cool function even Nintendo 64 owners mostly missed out on. As you can see, despite all of the amusing backdrops this game presents, Sculptured Software did not do as good a job digitising wrestlers with the same degree of quality and finesse that Midway had achieved prior. In Your House may be the newer game of the two, but sadly WrestleMania Arcade is graphically the more impressive looking game out of the pair. Nor is the gameplay as refined. It may have a lot of shortcomings, but the developers of WWF In Your House seem to have tried their very best to attempt to build on a WrestleMania arcade experience. Sadly though, the publishers on the other hand, Acclaim, never put as much effort into marketing this game as they possibly should have. Going back to an earlier point in the video, this was a time period where the company were to excuse the pun, on the ropes due to the combination of no longer being able to publish Mortal Kombat games, and more importantly, the investigation that was underway by the Securities and Exchange Commission as a result of the company's misconduct. The company were facing financial losses left, right and centre, and were even regularly laying off staff members through this time period. This would result in early review copies of the game not even making it to many journalists, meaning the game would not receive the amount of coverage most other games would get at the time. As for Acclaim themselves, it seemed that In Your House was a game they simply did not care about on release. They were so scarred by what was going on that the company as a whole were trying to turn the rudder of their boat away from licenses they never outright owned, and instead began to build their own IPs. This would result in Acclaim putting most of their eggs in the same basket, so the majority of the company's money would all be pumped into Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, a game for the Nintendo 64. In Your House was simply not really their focus. Out of the sparse coverage the game got for the PlayStation, Saturn and PC, GamePro called it a title full of promise and potential that ultimately gets pinned in its quest for the championship. They would even compare it unfavourably to Power Move Pro Wrestling, one of the Sony PlayStation's early polygon wrestling games. By the year 2000, during wrestling's biggest boom period, GameSpot would retrospectively look at the title, stating, the action is solid but overly derivative of Mortal Kombat, and that the selection of modes offers no true variety, summarising that it is little more than a rehash of the original. Looking back at this title, the game was destined to become a commercial failure. There were so many missteps that would result in In Your House becoming the most obscure WWF game of its era, despite the fact that it could easily be argued that aesthetically it stands out more than any other game in the genre. 
I guess to summarise, graphically, it looked dated. But if a claim did not even care about this game, then how was the mass market ever supposed to be exposed to this one in the first place? Either way, the absurdity of this game still gives the title an air of charm, which makes the game at least worth going back to check out, even if it's simply to laugh at the title's wackiness. Plus, I guess hardcore wrestling fans hold on to events and moments in history for their silliness, no matter how odd or obscure. So, In Your House will remain in the hearts of a certain demographic regardless. But despite all of this, I think it's about time that more people look at this ridiculous creation. It needs to be seen to be believed. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of WWF In Your House, the most ridiculous wrestling game of the 90s. Let me know in the comment section which other wrestling games you would like to see me cover in the future. I'm extremely keen to hear your thoughts. If you want more content like this, I've just added a wrestling game playlist to my channel, so you can check out the videos I have made covering other games from this genre. I've added an annotation at the end of the video too for you to simply click. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for multiple weekly uploads covering gaming's history. Hopefully I will see you in my comment section regularly. These videos discussing obscure, non-algorithm friendly topics are made possible in part due to the backing this channel receives on Patreon. So if you want all content early and would like to receive more incentives, then check out my reward tiers over on the Patreon platform. Special thank yous and shout outs go out to Sebastian Velez, Carl Johnson, A Murder of Crows, Heo Paula Lopez, Joseph Rasmick, Doug Perkins, Corey I. Marsh Sr., Lou Johnson, BXL Gotham, Ryan Dinched, Evan Boulder, Philip Manth, Cambo Rambo 82, Azra Rarakai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Varela, Prince Knight, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, TOG Driver, Angel Light 85, Alephia Swanson, Timothy W. Haskins II, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Carlos Domingos, Glennie Glenn, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Sponge Matt B, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Aaron McNamara, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Posty XL, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Ted Stickles, Langston Miller, Noob, Ryan Barry, Salagni, Stephen Lewis, Sarah Powell, Vlaming Renee, Sarai H. Al Sarai, Marvin Aranliga, Chris Cool, Adrian Hannington, Bernard N.G., Richard Stu Stewart, James McDonald, Crazy Yarl, Dan Van Dammit, Adam Casting, Gregory Smarajewicz, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Paul Elliott, Me Machine Dean, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Hans Christian, Craig Jenkins, Tom Elliott, Retroversion.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bozanski, and all of my other patrons. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Cheerio.